A couple of years ago, at the height of the tech industry, everyone was learning to code with the promise of a cushy six-figure job within just a few months of self-teaching coding. This all seemed way too good to be true at the time until, of course, it was. Starting in 2022, the fall of the tech industry has been as quick as its rise was 5 to 10 years ago. And today in 2025, we're sort of in a situation where coding is considerably less cool than it was a couple of years ago, which makes sense because a couple of years ago, a ton of people were learning to code, not because they actually liked coding, but because it was so easy, ostensibly, to get a high paying job and to get rich by simply learning to code. But all of this begs the question, when are coding jobs going to come back? Or are they actually gonna come back at all? Was coding just something that was big a couple of years ago, but it's never really gonna be the same again? So in this video, I wanted to look at actual facts. So not just my opinions or something like that, actual facts. So first of all, what caused this tech boom a couple of years ago? And then what caused this tech boom to end? So why did we see this crash? And sort of based on the reasons why all of these things happened, by looking at what is sort of happening now where i think the world is going i think we can sort of predict whether if ever coding jobs will come back and what will happen to the tech market in the next few years so that is what i want to discuss today and so to understand what will happen to the future of the tech industry we first need to understand the past like what actually happened and what caused the tech industry to go down in the first place well, in the big picture, this is all down to basic economics, aka supply and demand. Why were tech jobs so high paying and so easy to get in the 2000s and 2010s? Well, there's sort of two reasons. First of all, we can talk about the demand. What was happening on the one hand is that tech companies became the fastest growing and the most valuable companies in the world. Like if you were an entrepreneur and you wanted to get rich, there was all this new opportunity in the tech industry as building technology became easier coding became faster with all these new revolutions first of all the internet revolution in the early 2000s and then the social media revolution in sort of the 2010s so there were all of these big new companies that started popping up but the problem was that there was not enough people in the world to fill the supply of all the demand for programmers to actually build these products and when you had this huge competition between a couple of these very high growing companies the facebook's the google's the apple's things like this they all had to compete for this very small amount of tech talent that existed in the world because the supply didn't meet the demand because at the time, coding was, first of all, not that easy to learn. And second of all, the coding never really was like a cool thing before. Coding just used to be the kind of thing that some nerds in some laboratory somewhere in, in some university would do in their spare time to like tinker with things. And no one really thought of it as like a high paying or a cool industry to get into. So we didn't have the cultural perception that coding was a desirable job. So there just wasn't enough people doing it for that reason as well. So when these new high growth companies started popping up, they had to fight for the very small tech talent that existed. And when the demand greatly outstrips the supply, prices go up. In this case, the price of this talent is the salaries that keep people get paid. Companies were literally desperate for anyone with these encoding skills. And they also had to pay a lot of money. First of all, because they could afford it. And second of all, because they had to sort of compete against their competitors. Like if Google was offering 150K, but Facebook offered 200K, everyone would go to Facebook, right? So they sort of had to compete very hard and pay very, very high salaries to essentially entice the talent to go to them rather than their competitors. So this was the environment that we lived in when tech was like easy. It was easy to get jobs. It was easy to get paid well. So now let's talk about what actually led to the fall of the tech industry. Well, the first of these causes is really what happened during this growth phase. All of these companies, what they were essentially doing is what's called blitz scaling. They were hiring so many developers and they were hiring way more developers than they actually needed. Because their thinking was that let's just hoard all the talent that we can, because if growing in the future, we're going to have the need for all of these people. And number two, all these smart people, we need them to work for us rather than our competitors. So you might have teams that only needed two engineers, but they would hire 10 engineers just so that those 10 people wouldn't go to the competitors. And all of this was extremely unsustainable. So what happened now when the growth stopped, the economy slowed down? Well, all these companies realized, okay, we have all of these people that we don't actually need. So they started laying them off. And all of that was really led by the economy going down. So why did the economy go down? Well, we had the pandemic, which led to 
a lot of money printing, which led to a lot of inflation, which led to higher interest rates, which in turn led companies to invest much less into growth. Because when interest rates are high, that means borrowing money is more expensive. So companies will simply focus less on investing into growth and they will simply focus on profitability. They went like, okay, let's just maintain what we have rather than building more stuff essentially. And now that these companies had essentially reached their peak, like they had reached the market level that they wanted to reach. They had essentially built all their products already. Now they were like, okay, we don't necessarily need to grow as fast anymore. Even if competitors take some engineers, they suddenly didn't need all these engineers that weren't really doing much anyway, so they could lay them off. So the demand started to go down drastically. And then on the other side, we had the supply going up. Why? Because like I told you, back in the day, coding was not cool. But then it suddenly became cool as people started to realize like, Oh, learning to code is an easy way to get paid, well, very, very fast. So when they saw this gold rush in the coding industry, we also saw a similar gold rush in the teaching people to code industry that I guess I'm in personally as well, where when there were so many people trying to learn to code, and simultaneously people started to realize like, okay, maybe I don't need a computer science degree to like be able to code and things like this. More and more boot camps, online courses, things like this started springing up that were teaching everyone to code. So now we're in this situation where it's actually culturally cool. Like people want to learn to code. Number two, it's pretty easy to learn to code as like new tools come up as well, like AI that make coding itself easier as well. So the supply of the amount of people that actually have the skills to code also drastically went up. So when demand goes down, supply goes up then what happens basic economics again price goes down so salaries go down and now it's actually much much more difficult to get a job when companies just don't have a need for the amount of people that want these jobs and this is something that was sort of always going to happen by the way because if we have any situation in the world where suddenly there's a massive demand for this new skill which means the price of that skill goes up a lot of people are just gonna flock to learning that skill. So the thing we need to understand that it was never really a stable situation where just by learning the code, you could magically get rich or something like that. Because when that happens, eventually more and more people are gonna flock to it, which is gonna fill the demand and make it more difficult to get in. And there were other things going on as well that essentially made things even worse for the tech industry. First of all, we had a lot of very destructive regulations. I recently made a video about this very peculiar law that not many people talk about called the Section 174 change in the US tax code that essentially just discouraged companies further from hiring engineers because it changed how software engineer salaries can essentially be deducted in taxes and things like this. So that made things even worse. Now, all of this led coding and tech to essentially become more just like a normal industry where if you have an industry that pays well, like coding still does, then obviously it's gonna be difficult to get in because people are ambitious. People usually mostly gravitate to the higher paying jobs, which is gonna lead to a lot of competition. And by the way, this is nothing new. Before I got into tech, I used to be in banking. And in banking, it's sort of the same situation as what tech is now. It's very well paid, but it's difficult to get in, obviously, precisely because it is well paid. And in banking, this is just like a normally accepted fact, like people just understand like, okay, obviously, if I want to get into this very high paying industry that everyone wants to get into, obviously, I'm going to have to stand out. Obviously, I'm going to have to be the strongest candidate and beat the competition. But people in tech, in this bubble of tech, started thinking like, okay, this is normal. It's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be easy to get a high paying job when the economic reality is that that is not normal. That is the exception, not the rule. So now that we have all this background out of the way, we can sort of start to understand what I think might happen in the future. And I think there are some cautious reasons for optimism, because despite what I just said, it is true that coding is particularly difficult right now because you have this massive oversupply of programmers. You had all these programmers who learned to code for these jobs in the past who have now been laid off. So the oversupply of programmers is probably even bigger than it should be under normal conditions. But I do think that there's some reason to believe that number one, the supply is going to go down and the demand is going to go up a little bit, not at the same level as it was before, but I think the situation will get better. First, let's talk about the demand. Why do I think that in the future, the demand for programmers will go up? The well, first thing is interest rates. So we mentioned that the biggest reason that essentially catapulted companies to stop hiring and to start laying people off 
was higher interest rates and the resulting slowdown in the economy. Well, the thing about the economy is that it always sort of goes up and down. We had a big downturn that was really spurred by the COVID pandemic. Now it is sort of slowing down. Inflation is going down. And as a result, interest rates are and have already started to go down slowly. So it will be a very soft landing, but slowly we're going to start to see an uptick of new companies coming up because there's more optimism in the economy. Companies investing more in the growth again because money is more affordable now. And in fact, the data already backs this up. If you look at many of these graphs with like open tech jobs, you can see that the number of tech jobs has already started to go up a little bit. On the supply side, essentially what I think is that there's going to be kind of an auto correction. We had this massive oversupply of programmers in the past when it was super cool to learn the code. Everyone wanted to learn the code because they think it was an easy way to get rich. Now people have broadly realized, that, okay, it's no longer like that. So a lot of people have just shifted from learning the code to learning something else. A lot of people who were learning the code before have given up. There's a lot less hype right now in terms of learning the code than there was in the past, which if you're still there, like you're still sticking with it, that is good for you because it means that there is less competition, which leads the supply of programmers simply to auto-correct to more normal levels as people simply shift to other industries when coding is no longer this magical industry where it's easy to get rich. Crucially though, the new jobs will come up again, but I don't think they will be at the same companies as they were before. In the previous gold rush, it was the Facebooks, the Google, the fan companies essentially that had all these jobs, but it was precisely because at the time, those were the fast growing companies that were investing heavily into growth. Tech is the kind of industry that does extremely well. We have a lot of high growth companies that are investing into growth. Why specifically growth? Well, when you think about it, coding is really the kind of job that is mostly needed for growing new businesses and to building new products. When you've already built the product, like you can take Facebook, for example, Facebook already exists. So they naturally need a lot less engineers to maintain Facebook than they needed to build Facebook, especially when they were trying to do it extremely quickly. So that is why I don't think jobs will go quite to the same level as they were before because these big tech companies are essentially already established. They're not gonna need to grow at the pace that they needed to grow before. That is unless one thing happens. And that one thing is unless there is a new revolution in some new industry. So in the 2000s, the tech boom was driven by like internet companies. In the past tech gold rush, it was driven by social media companies. We had social media, that was this new thing, which brought all these new social media companies to really invest heavily. Now, it is possible that we're gonna see a similar gold rush, but it's going to have to be in some new area or some new industry that we don't necessarily know what that is yet. It could be AI, it could very well be that once the economy gets better, there's a lot of new AI companies that are gonna pop up. And in fact, that is already happening right now. So there is a possibility that tech will see a similar boom, but that will require that there is some new like frontier of technology that companies start building that we haven't seen before. That's gonna lead to a lot of competition, a lot of companies hiring again because they're trying to outcompete each other. That is what would be required for tech to go to the same level as it was before. If that doesn't happen, it will get easier from now as the supply sort of auto corrects and the demand slowly creeps up. But what we need to understand is that most likely coding will simply again become one of these more normal industries where if it's well paid, it means that there's gonna be high competition and to get in, you are simply going to have to stand out. And what this means is that you simply have to learn the skills that companies need. You have to be better than competition. You have to be better at actually selling your skills to these companies to show them, yes, I know how to code better than the other candidates you have. That is simply the reality. Now, if you wanna learn these skills, I have a course where I teach this. People absolutely love it. And I've essentially designed it in such a way that we will give you all the skills that you need without the fluff that you don't actually need and we will do it as quickly and efficiently as possible and i will also give you all of the non-technical skills that you need to actually not just have the technical skills but show to these companies that you have the technical skills so if you're interested in that you can check that out down below in the description and the real thing you need to understand is that coding is not dead if you're not getting jobs right now it just means that you're not good enough. You want to learn how you can actually become good enough. I made a detailed video on that right here on why coding is not dead, but you're just not good enough. So go watch that video next and I'll see you in the next one.